The severe weather outbreak that we're looking at on Thursday also into Friday are being driven by several meteorological conditions. First, we're going to see what we call steepening lapse rates as this cold air aloft moves through. And we're going to start to see some hail during the early morning hours. And I'll tell you what, as we head into the afternoon, you start to see these convective bands start to form. And with this type of setup, with that curved photograph look, that's how you really look at what's going on in the atmosphere. Your curvature, it's there. A lot of wind shear. These thunderstorms may be low top, but in a highly sheared environment, it's easy to see how we could not just get some strong thunderstorms, but some tornadoes too. And that would really be into Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening from Minnesota back into Wisconsin. I think as far south as Illinois and Indiana, you've got to watch these too as they move into Michigan. The Storm Prediction Center highlighting this area. We'll, we'll look here first from really eastern Minnesota. Really, I go back as far as central Minnesota, but the strongest threat looks to be here from pretty much all of Wisconsin into parts of Michigan, northern and central Illinois and Indiana. I think you have to watch this region too for strong damaging winds, some hail, and that hail could be large in the order of maybe up to two, three inches at times. And we're going to see dew points that climb into the 60s here. So with that happening, we're also going to be watching a, a lot of large-scale rising motion into the atmosphere along with a strong 40 to 50 knot low-level jet. So you have all of that combining into this region and aloft, you've got a lot of uh, winds coming in like this so they're spreading out with your jet streak so your low level winds at the surface coming in in a bit of a different direction than they are aloft that's going to create an environment that's favorable for supercell development as we head into east central minnesota and the parts of southeast wisconsin uh, all the way through the evening hours now additionally we're also going to see a, a lot of cold air aloft so with that happening, it's easy to see how you could see some of that those storms really get strong heading into the afternoon and evening and produce tornadoes. That risk has been hatched out. That means there's a significant risk of that here from western Wisconsin all the way down to Lake Michigan. Not quite to Chicago, but just because you're not in this hatched area, look, that tornado threat pushes all the way east into southern and really central Michigan, down into Indiana, Illinois, and further to the south. I mean, even down into Kentucky, Tennessee. It's not a zero threat, even as far south as Arkansas, but it's clear to see as this low wraps up where your wind shear is going to be the highest and the greatest, and that twist in the atmosphere is why our tornado threat is the greatest around the Great Lakes, uh, and also further back to the west into the upper Midwest. Look at this. This is your significant tornado parameter. You can't always judge this, but this takes a variety of parameters, your instability, your wind shear, and the low levels of the atmosphere, which, by the way, this is your significant tornado parameter anything over one is is very impressive but i'm going to flip this over now we're going to look at the helicity the shear and the very lowest levels of the atmosphere between zero and one kilometer and you can definitely see that being sheared out here so those thunderstorms they may be low top but clearly enough wind shear and if you look at the zero to three kilometer wind shear pretty high here so easy to see how those thunderstorms will be rotating or they're, they're going to want to rotate and now we're looking into friday that threat drops to the south as our front moves to the south and east from the mid-Atlantic, but the highest risk for severe weather will really be from about southern Ohio, parts of western West Virginia into western Virginia, back really going up here along the Ohio River, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, back into Missouri, and parts of northern Kentucky have the highest risk area of seeing damaging winds, hail, and maybe tornadoes too. I don't think we're done with that yet. Here's what's driving it also in the upper levels. I talked about that upper level support. One jet streak kicking out as we head into Thursday morning. That'll keep the severe weather ongoing in the early period here from eastern parts of Nebraska into southern parts of South Dakota and eastern parts of South Dakota. Again, look at how this wind aloft is just fanning out. So a lot of good diffluence, the spreading of that wind, that helps really fuel the thunderstorms. And again, our winds aloft, especially up here into parts of Wisconsin, in the upper levels coming in almost at a westerly fetch if you go back down to the surface you're going to see a little bit of a different look so right here your winds now coming in out of the almost out of the southeast at times so with your strong support for veering winds tornado threat, tornado threat pretty high here a little bit closer look here into Wisconsin uh, and also northern Minnesota. These storms lifting to the north, but also watch the storms to the south across Illinois, back into Missouri too. Some of these could get strong. The, the biggest risk is going to be here, though, as we head into the evening hours, 
an hour by nine, 10 o'clock, storms moving through Chicago. And then once we get toward 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, pushing here into southern and central Michigan. And I don't know that the NAM is doing too good of a job picking up on the storms further to the south, but watch what happens as we move now into the early morning hours of Friday. These storms moving through northern Ohio, so maybe some late night thunderstorms here. Uh, this could be the kind that wake you up in the middle of the night. I don't know that they're going to be extremely severe just because they're not happening during the peak heating hours, but some of these could be on the strong side, too severe. And then as we head into Friday morning, some big storms could still be ongoing into parts of central PA, but now we're looking back into this region for redevelopment heading into Friday afternoon and Friday evening. These cells could get pretty strong and then form a line of thunderstorms that start to bow out and drop into Kentucky and Tennessee heading into Friday evening and Friday night. Still some time before we iron out these details, but we are not done with the severe weather. Uh, in fact, it looks like another day of that on Friday. Here's sort of a different look as those storms get organized really right along the Ohio River and then drop south into Kentucky and Tennessee. And look, if they hold together, uh, you know, we're moving to the late night hours, but this could be uh, one heck of a line that we're watching through the overnight Friday night into Saturday. A wider look at the west, and then we'll look at the entire country. Back here, we're not looking at the severe weather. We're looking at the cold, and yeah, a little bit of snow, too, still flying across the northern Rockies. Another disturbance will bring more chances for snow heading into Friday night, into early Saturday. And check this out. Another cold shot of air moving into the west coast here, moving into the Pacific Northwest. That's going to drop your snow levels into the Cascades, also into northern California. It could put snow as far south as the Sierra, and I'm telling you, this could be heavy. And it tries to drop some precipitation into the mountains of Southern California, down into northern New Mexico. Dare I say the San Francisco peaks may be covered in some more snow as we head into Sunday and Monday. And this, to me, looks like we could be dealing with more snow into Colorado. And are we looking at more severe weather into next week? It's May. It's that time of year. We could just be ramping up a, a pretty active period. So I'm going to let this play out in time. There's your low that's bringing the severe weather for Thursday. Also, your front dropping to the south now heading into Friday. Timestamp is above my head as we walk through the next several days. Low pressure just spinning here and now into parts of uh, the Great Lakes. It's going to keep the rain showers around. We're drying out, though, as high pressure, at least at the surface, tries to nudge into the Ohio Valley. But that return flow bringing more showers and storms across the southern plains into parts of Arkansas, into the deep south as we move now into Sunday and Monday. Cold, I mean, by May standards, cold high pressure building in as an area of low pressure wraps up off the northeast coast heading into Monday. That's going to nudge down into the Great Lakes, bringing some much cooler weather across the west. We've talked about that rain and snow here. That continues to push toward the central Rockies. And now we wonder what happens as this energy taps into some really, I think, some unstable conditions across the plain states. So are we looking at a severe weather event heading into Monday and Tuesday of next week? Maybe so, especially if we can see a rapidly deepening area of low pressure on the east side of the Rockies. We're looking at now, right, a week away. So let's see how all this plays out, but this could be something to keep an eye on. And now we're really going out in time. I don't know that you believe any of this, but the idea, I think, though, is for more active weather on the way. So pretty, uh, pretty active, anyway, uh, over the next several days. All right, stay weather aware, not just tonight, but also into tomorrow and also into Friday as we watch these storms sag to the south. If you're just dropping in, thanks for watching. You can back it up and take it from the beginning. You're catching the live broadcast. If you are watching the, uh, the playback, you can subscribe and get these anytime. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Be safe and have a way to get those weather alerts, whether it's a NOAA weather radio on your phone, something. See you guys.